right. Hey there. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us for video two. So as we explained in our intro video, um, this is Avra Robinson and Rosie McQuillan talking about Padlet and how some of the older features and the new updated features are creating opportunities for differentiation in our classroom. Hi, Avra. Hi, everybody. Glad to be back in video number two. All right, so to begin with, um, it looks a little different now on iPad and it looks a little different on the web. We've got, um, what we're finding that when you type in the box, um, now it launches the iOS keyboard when you're on an iPad, right, Rosie? Yes, it does. And some of the features here, needs to say, are just part of the iOS and on your um your device and one of the features that I love here for differentiation is the word prediction options which if you see in that image that Avra is projecting here the I, the high, and the this are part of that um, predictive text and the ability for students to have text predicted as they type is a huge support and one fact about this is if students get to three options that they can't differentiate between the three words, if they touch and hold, those words will then speak aloud, giving them an audio of what, in fact, that word is. So think about how that can support a learner where typing is so hard. And also, I think about the student that um, because either typing or spelling is difficult, they tend to shorten their sentences and say less than they perhaps would want to. So that predictive text can really come in handy. Yeah, that's awesome. That's an awesome feature that you're only going to find um, on your iPad. When you right. actually do this on the web, I'll just kind of show you what it looks like. So here's a blank Padlet wall, and I'm going to double click. I could also use this circle down here and click, and it's going to create a new note for me. So my title could be anything from my name to the title of my note, and then I can write some text here. So on the web, I'm on my MacBook. This would be the same on a Chromebook. It would be the same on a Windows machine. I can highlight words, and so once I've typed them and I highlight them, by, I just double-clicked on that word, write. Now I have some basic style choices here. So I've got bold, I've got italics, I've got a strike-through option. I even have an option to highlight. Um, I haven't been able to find anything but green, so if somebody out there knows how to make it a different color, let me know. But there are some things like superscript and subscript. Um, and one of the other things that Rosie and I were talking about were just the bullets, that you can make a bulleted list or a numbered list now. Correct. And the other thing, Avra, if we go back to that um, initial slide with um, the formatting on an iPad, one thing I truly forgot is the fact that once your keyboard on your iOS device launches, you have the option for dictation. And it is supported in Padlet. So students could use the speech to text feature and talk about what they wanted um, to say. I did that the other night with Cameron, my seven-year-old, who isn't completely reading and writing yet by himself. So he was speaking in, and he loved it. He thought it was really cool. He sees mom do that on her phone all the time when she's texting. So he thought it was really neat to do it on the iPad. We were mind mapping out some George Washington facts. So that's awesome. Just another way to differentiate. And it's huge. And it doesn't need to, I mean, a, oftentimes a lot of kids use it. And the accuracy is quite good. So that's one to really keep in mind. Yeah, for sure. So after you've gotten through your typing, guys, then you're going to take a look at the different icons that are below the text area. And so yep. what you have there is you have four different um, icons that are like kind of your, your most frequently used ones. So this is going to be our image icon, our link. This one is for searching the web, which we'll talk about in our third video. And then this one is to take a picture right within Padlet. And then there's a three-dot menu. So the three-dot menu explores all of these options over here on the right. So you have all of these different options. And Rosie and I were just talking about how these icons are kind of a hieroglyphics of sorts. Right, right Rosie? Right. I agree. Uh, there's the fact that I think it's something that as educators we don't necessarily teach our students. But these are icons that they're going to see everywhere they don't really change that much so you know a 15 minute quick lesson on what all those icons mean 
is huge for kids. So then they know every time they see it, this is going to launch my camera roll. This is going to actually take a picture in the here and now. This is where I can link to an outside resource or file. And so it's important. It's an important skill for kids to have. Well, yeah, it's like letters and numbers when you're little and you're learning your letters and your numbers. I mean, what do these icons mean? We teach them in our Ed Tech Teacher workshops to adults, and sometimes it's that is the aha moment that they have then, that they're like, oh, that makes sense to me now. I see this all over the place on all of my devices. So, um, so we're going to kind of just kind of go through all of these now and talk about what they do. Um, and as we do, we're going to discuss, like, for example, visual note-taking. So, Rosie, take it away with visual note-taking. Well, you know, visual note taking or sketch noting, um, it, there's been a lot of research and a lot of talk about it as of late. And Padlet allows for both. It allows for students or teachers to bring in an image, which you, uh, Ava showed in the, in the last slide, and to add text. The other thing about it is the fact that we do know that the combination of text and images of, um, allows for students to recall of information more readily. The other thing about adding images and text is we're making these notes more spatial, assisting some students with, you know, text is more linear, and when you're adding visual notes, um, it's more spatial. You can also, with Padlet in specific, uh, the Canvas template, you can allow students to draw lines to connect like ideas, which is huge. Right. Yeah, for Again, sure. You know, they, it allows for the personalization of the look and layout of the actual Padlet board, whether it's begun by a teacher or um, is student-driven. That's the neat thing about this is that we're going to look at Padlet in two different ways here. One is, you know, teacher created, teacher putting resources out there for students, and then also students having their own Padlet wall and, and utilizing it as um, a creation space. So, exactly. Yeah. So once it, you, go ahead. It, it allows for multimedia posts right. on either end, teacher or student. Right. Yeah, that's what's amazing. It's become so multimedia. Um, yeah. wh one of the things that came out, this isn't most recently, but just within maybe the last year or so, maybe the last six months, is color coding of notes. I love that. I do too. It made me so happy. Uh, you, you had been looking for it. And I, you know, think about visual connections and the ability to organize and synthesize information all in one place. Great for research, color coding like ideas, and visually being able to see how ideas, facts, thoughts are associated. Right. I do it all the time in other applications. I just love color right. coding. It completely helps me. Um, so just so you know, guys, when you do it, you have to create your note first. So um, as I first create my note, there isn't an isn't a place here to decide that I want this to be something other than white. So what I need to do then is tap off of it or click off of it and then when I put my mouse back on top of it and I hover, um, I get this these options here. I can either edit my post, I could delete my post, or the three dot menu is then going to give me the color coding options. So I could make it pink or I could make it purple or do whatever. And there's a, quite a few other options in here too. Um, transferring a post, that actually means that you can go and put it onto another Padlet wall. So if maybe you're, you've, if you're a student, you've got several Padlet walls going for different research and different projects or something, and you find a fact about Martin Luther King, but you happen to be on your Rosa Parks, um, right. you know, Padlet wall, you can go and transfer it over to the correct one. And expand a post means make it big. So this is where if teachers are showing something in class and the student has written something and they want to make it big on their board, this would be a neat way to be able to see it kind of front and center.
So that's color coding notes. Um, and now we can talk about drawing because there's a whole drawing component now um, of of Canvas and it's it's really awesome. So Rosie, go ahead and talk about why we think this is exciting and then I'll show it how to do it. Well, you know, we usually when we give students options, it's usually text. Sometimes we allow for images, but there are those kids where, you know, doodling is really where it's at for them. And they can show what they know and make connections when um, actually putting things into words is not the best learning media for them. So they can show things non-linguistically, which several, which many apps don't necessarily have. So the drawing allows for that personal connection of an idea where the pencil and paper, um, if it was their only choice, would not be something that they would select. And the fact that drawing or images are more mistake tolerant and digital format in and itself is more mistake tolerant. Yeah, exactly. So a lot is for them to be able to erase and change, reorganize. And we didn't even talk about the fact that it's the never ending piece of paper. So for that student that needs something larger or, um, you know, the, the kid that's that's taping pieces of paper together, mm -hmm. this eliminates that. Yeah. The kindergarten teacher yeah. in me and, and the mom of the first grader now yeah. knows what that's all about. I mean, erasing is hard. It's hard to get rid of that pencil, yeah. and it often rips or at least crinkles the paper, which can throw us into a tailspin and get really frustrating. So, yeah. you know, talk about mistake tolerant. I'm you know, I'm not, um, I have really nice handwriting when I spend a lot of time and I don't want to spend a lot of time. So that's why I like being in a digital world. Um, well, well, the other thing is they can draw a picture or graph to represent and interpret their ideas. They can also use it, you know, you can call it as a scribble tool to write and solve problems in math. Exactly. You know, our teachers are always looking for an alternative way to demonstrate student understanding and create artifacts. And you know, it's easier, I find it's easier on the iPad to draw, but I'm going to go ahead and show it on my Mac anyway. So guys, sure. I just created a new note and I used the three dot menu here. I'm going to come on down to draw and this is what it gives me. So I've got the option for a variety of different colors. I have the option for either a white background or a black background and then pencil yes. and eraser. Okay, so, you know, I could do a math problem. You can see I'm, you know, doing this with my, my touchpad here. It's going to take um, 2x369. We'll make this 9. Um, you know, I, so I could solve this problem if I wanted to. Um, I could change colors to, to do my next step here. Oh, I did that wrong. You can see I wasn't great at um, algebra. I should have done minus three first. But you get, you get the idea. That's what, uh, that's what the drawing pad looks like. So I'll go ahead and close that up so I don't continue to embarrass myself. So that's kind of what it looks like when you um, are in the drawing function. And then once you hit save, it creates your drawing for you. And you'll see in just a second, it's going to create a note. And the drawing is there. So, you know, again, I can still type up I here. Love, and then student can add their name or they can actually add a text explanation of how they solved that problem. It makes me think what I would love, if Padlet ever watches this, the ability to then add an audio note below that. Right. We're going to show, yeah. we're going to talk about audio notes, but right now we haven't found a way to combine audio Correct. with with the drawing and so that would Correct. that would be definitely the next feature because then you can then you're screencasting you know and that's really amazing you know we always want more as educators <laughs> we do especially from these incredible free tools um, well, and the other thing about that is the spatial the spatial arrangement of the notes and ideas um, are is relevant for some kids and being able to move them around is important so they can put all information that is in one category all in one place, whether they've color-coded it or just kind of moved the stickies to where it makes more sense for them. Yeah, absolutely. So this is just a slide, guys, that kind of shows the how-to of how creating a drawing. And here you can see that I worked the math problem appropriately. <laughs> um, 
but that's our that's our drawing so beyond being able to draw and create maybe your own images you can also bring images into Padlet from a variety of sources and images are so important for differentiation right Rosie for sure the fact that you know the student can draw their own image or maybe they have an artifact that they have and they want to upload that to help them remember something relevant or just show what they know. So now you can add images um, from your camera or device or import an image that's on your computer, giving students another way to demonstrate learning in a different way. So in order to kind of demonstrate that, let me just show you if I double click and make a new, a new note. Um, I can use this up, upload up arrow, and from here, I just discovered yesterday, I can hit pick file, which will take me into the hard drive of my Mac, or Padlet now is doing something where they're creating kind of a Padlet drive. So these are all the images that I've ever put onto a Padlet wall in my Padlet account. So it's, it was very interesting to me um, to see that, so we'll have to see how that progresses. But for example, if I wanted to do um, pick file and say I wanted to throw in this United States map, I could, oops, no, I don't want to cancel, sorry. Um, so I could type words, I could have a title, and I could also pull in an image. So that's one way of pulling in an image. Another way of pulling in an image is actually to launch the camera. So with that, um, I could be a student holding up an artifact and take a picture of it. Now this is um, not a great example because the lighting in here is not great, but that is actually an option. You could hold up well, a here is the tool does not impact the outcome because what it allows the student to do is select from a variety of tools whether it's text video drawing um, accessing the camera um, allowing for variety and choice yeah and when you're pulling from when I'm pulling from my iPad if I've got videos that I've created in other applications or videos that I've just taken um, with the camera with the video camera on the iPad you can pull that right in also correct so it's, it's and, pretty awesome those varying formats can be used not only from the student showing you know voice and choice and demonstrating an understanding of the assignment it can they can also be used by the teacher to give directions give examples in numerous ways and that's just so helpful. I think I just feel like it's so helpful to, for students. Yeah, well, it allows you know the variety of resources to be uploaded to an assignment to help support student learning. Right. And guys, just so you just so you see and understand the three dot menu here, um, these icons are repeated. So here we've got upload, but it's that same up arrow. You know, here we have snap, which is just to take that picture, and it's that same one there. So. Um, you know, that's just something else to point out. You know, and we've talked about this before and we think about differentiation. Students can now, so just in this one um, application, students can now select how they will demonstrate their understanding. And with that, and that then allows for a variety of final products or projects. Um, and just think of how others may learn from that variety as well. I love that. I do too. I do too. It's so much more than just pencil and paper, text, you know, words, writing, Correct. all of that. So again, and it's free. Did we forget to say that? Say that again. And it's free. It's free and it's fun. <laughs> I think it's really fun. Like when I, when I do this and I look at it and I'm looking at all these colorful icons as a student yeah. and as a teacher, I just get super excited. So you can see guys here that there are a variety of things that we haven't talked about yet. We have not talked about video. We have not talked about audio, but in an effort to keep this short and sweet <laughs> to a certain extent, um, we wanted to chunk these videos down into just three different ones. So we're gonna say goodbye for now. And in our last video, we're gonna come back and we're gonna explore web searches, 
audio and video for Padlet. Yeah, hyperlinking. Exactly, and that's going to be and keeping everything in one place. So that'll be the um, that'll be all the frosting on top of this already delicious cupcake. So thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you in our next video.